welcome everybody to my presentation on groupware for collaborative content creation and curation. As the research symposium was offered to the public, I realized that although I had uh, covered a lot of terrain, this could literally take me into other areas. So thank you for having me. I just graduated from the Master of Science, majoring in Instructional Design Technology. My day job is as a full-time application specialist covering the warehouses at our company. We have locations, uh, three locations in North America, two in Canada, one in Mexico. Uh, headquarters is here in Madison, Indiana. We have one location in Europe, and we have two locations in China. And uh, I, I as support as second tier with uh, logistics, their barcode scanners, their labels, and above all, the enterprise resource planning system, the ERP, uh, JD Edwards. It all combines this presentation today with the fact that I've been a Toastmaster since 2008, uh, 2018, and completed my first DTM. DTM stands for Distinguished Toastmaster. And it simply means that you decided to complete the whole manual, if you will. The program has leadership tracks. You volunteer at the district level, at the club level. You help to sponsor, mentor, or charter clubs. Also act as a mentor for a club. And you have to mentor a new member twice during that time, which leads me to first two times that I was able to present professionally was at Collaborate 2018 in Las Vegas, Nevada. That was a very inspiring invitation to participate. Uh, I spoke about our sales CRM and how we connected it to J.D. Edwards. And then also in Focus 2020, virtually, we spoke about testing for our EDI. Otherwise, according to my social media, I'm supposed to be a digital creator. That's what they say I could qualify as. As I mentioned before, being a Toastmaster and being given the opportunity to take this graduate program, again, thanks to my employer, they supported it fully. I chose to incorporate both experiences into this instructional intervention. That's what we have to work on throughout the IDT, Instructional Design Technology Masters, into this instructional intervention, which I mentioned before, emphasizes collaborative content creation and curation. It also has a hashtag based on those four initials, uh, C4, HPL. HPL stands for a Toastmasters project uh, titled High Performance Leadership where other members come in and mentor me at the beginning, at the end. I have gathered all these materials, by the way. That's why I've been asking about the recordings. Uh, gather all these materials so that they can see it and evaluate it. And then finally, this all comes from a deep-seated belief that I know groupware may sound a little quaint, especially when you look it up on, on the library research. I fancy myself also as an aficionado historian. I mean, one smiles nowadays, but remembering the clip it, tapping on your window, remembering those uh, MSDOS screens, talking about work perfect and multiplan. Groupware, essentially by the name, is to help groups work together. And it's obviously something that the video conferencing workspace, however you want to call it, Teams, Zoom, we come together in groups. These are applications that are best utilized by groups of people. So I use that old term. I like it. And finally, lest I forget, this presentation today is part of a project called Prepare to Speak Professionally, Project A509, in what's called the Pathways Learning Experience. All you need when you present outside your club is to have a fellow Toastmasters, and I believe uh, one of them is here. He's also my club mentor, and he's going to help me evaluate that. 
So I titled every uh, most of the slide in the form of questions, uh, hoping to trigger uh, for the Q&A or for later, you'll have my contact information. So who is this intervention for? To me, this intervention is targeted at any modern digital creator. It doesn't have to be just, uh, you know, a specific group because we all have access to, this, uh, to the same tools. So whether or not you have a lot of experience with applications that come often with just our account or what we get on our computers at work, such as Google Slides or PowerPoint for the branding, Zoom or Teams or Google Meet. Uh, I personally use the free version of Zoom and I think it, it, it offers a lot for basic uh, content creation. And finally, YouTube. Whoever has a Gmail account has access to what uh, YouTube calls the YouTube Creator Studio, which is how you organize and you edit your videos on a channel. The whole point is to create content on our own, on their own, or as I originally uh, conceived the intervention, as a side activity. Okay, we run these meetings in Toastmasters. We have been pioneering, if you will, what we now call hybrid. Uh, I'm wearing a badge from a club that was specifically, I'm going to say, prototype for the purpose to explore more how to do what is now ubiquitous. So this side activity of hitting record and saving the content is what I tried to break down. Uh, when I started the instructional design program, there was a commentary that if you do a, a real task analysis, you could break down making good toast in about 400 steps. That's how meticulous uh, an ID, an instructional designer can be in terms of breaking down every step. Now, what for? I, I always like to ask myself, what for? So to me, what for is again, rally intermediate beginning users that use the applications that are listed, uh, provide them with a properly integrated and cogent use case that embodies principles. Somebody once said that principles are, are, principle are as few as policies are many and principles are as timeless as policies are ephemeral. And when one works in some environments, you will hear this question, okay, you have all this technical knowledge, but do you know what the business is? So to me, the business in this case is, is the business of creation, of digital content creation that with all these tools have come down to become accessible for many. And for many could make a big difference in terms of, for example, for a Toastmaster, even if nobody else sees the video, you can keep it for evaluation. Or you can say, you know what, this video is nice enough, show it to your club and use it for promotion. A key feature of the intervention is that I'm hoping for these video blogs and podcasts, that's a very interesting thing about the Zoom application. When you record locally, you also get an audio file. And now they call them not podcasts, but audio companions. So if you, if you love the show, but you just want to hear the audio of the show, most likely with a descriptive narration, it's right there. But going back to the intervention, the need for minimal post-production is something that I've been focused on because many times, many people shy away from doing this because then they think, oh my gosh, now I have to go fix it. And you hear in, 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 in the slides um, that are coming up about preparing. So in that preparing is where the post-production can be minimized. Now you ask me, where does this content go? I, I, I normally don't blog, I don't podcast, I, I'm, you know, I'm not on Facebook. I understand. However, for many organizations, again, I'm trying to make this as broad as possible. And hopefully when uh, our district leaders, my district leaders and, and other officers in the, the organization see it, the content is meant to, I'm sorry, I'm a little dark, thank you. 
is, is meant to help boost and feed existing or future social media persona. Have the time, you know, for example, if you go to wordpress.com where I build a site, they will tell you, just, just get started. Uh, I don't know how many have, have uh, seen that movie, Julia and Julia. It was an interesting, based on a true story case of somebody who decided to blog based on a book and make the recipes. It made for an interesting movie. And yes, the only one reading the blog at the beginning was the parent of the character. And at the end, she eventually, arguably, by virtue of a seriousness, that means the stick to of doing it and doing it, doing it regularly and, and sticking to the goal within the year, she eventually reached and found an audience. And they made a movie of that. And back to the minimizing the need for post-production, the thought is that when you prepare and you're able to tackle these uh, chores ahead of time, instead of having to tweak and open the app again and you know have to add some graphical elements after, if you add them before, you can spend that time uploading. And once you upload, for example, in the YouTube uh, channel Creator Studio, there is basic post-production in there. You can still, after you upload it, you can now manipulate the video in the cloud. Arguably, a much better way of doing it. Wait, Francisco, but is this meant only for Toastmasters? No. I started there. In a minute, we're going to see a theory of change, theory logic model diagram and a theory of change diagram. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on those. I think that's the, arguably the academic uh, cornerstone of the intervention is based on the Kellogg's Foundation analysis of proposals for grants. I found that one that one source, that one reference, to be extremely enlightening as to really what for you know what is this this proposal for? And when I read it and when I completed it, and the more I do it, you know, as a Toastmaster for myself, and arguably now at work, I have. Um, access to Office 365 in the cloud, and I'm in heaven. Uh, streams records the meeting, streams, uh, team, I'm sorry, teams records the meeting, teams can get transcripts real time in any language. And when some people kind of, why did you give me that transcript? That transcript is not in good shape. I've now realized that the transcript is essentially your draft closed captioning because then you can pull it back in. YouTube does the same thing. So the intervention is to encourage anybody, not just the Toastmasters, that uses the technology to think about by pressing a few more buttons and sharing the shores, content can be created. I, for one, drive past a few churches and their signs, they say, live stream. I don't want to get into a controversial conversation, but the fact is the technology is there, and I'm pretty sure many people will continue to participate virtually in this uh, in events because of the convenience and many techs, many AV techs and the people you know that, that help with these chores at their organizations may want to continue doing it precisely because it helps to feed their online persona. Okay. The theory logic model diagram from the Kellogg Foundation. Second here, so I can look at it. Oops, sorry. Okay. It has assumptions, inputs, activities, outputs, outcomes, and impact. Okay, I really like this because it, it divides it in the beginnings. Now I'm going into a more chronological phase: the plan, work, and then the intended results. I'm just going to read off out of here. For example, my assumptions are the interest in narrow casting. I have a project to create a postcard. I have a project to create a blog. And guess what? Through documenting the instructional intervention here at school, the blog keeps going. And I'm able to put materials, such as the invitation that many of you took up on LinkedIn to this presentation today. And now I can link it back once the video is posted and, and make it part of the of the documentation, if you will, of the log of the journal of the intervention. So inputs, Zoom masters, 
pathways projects, the audiences themselves, and these apps. According to catalog, those are the, the, the pieces that I need to make it work. The activities, one rehearses the project, one conducts the projects, one reports the project, one curates, and then one shapes. Project, project, project. And by project is specifically here, I'm talking about the pathways learning experience, prepare a speech project. What are the, our outputs? The projects are now branded. The projects are now collaborative. The projects have been recorded, re curated, and shared. Out of those outputs, from what I've known, I've uh, been a member again since 2008, on and off, it's a privilege to have time. It's a privilege to be a member and be able to partake of this learning experience. Uh, to me, the outcomes in my specific case are the fact that I have lasting evaluation materials, meaning if I have to show somebody at a club that wants to see, okay, when did you finish that project? I can point it to the video. The interactions that I'm now developing uh, as the intervention has grown and I've already, for example, presented uh, our spring conference on April 9th and this two pieces, what I'm presenting today and what I put out there, I hope to show them you know, side by side so that people can see, okay, where is this going through the research symposium? but also what it's about. The details are on that April 9th presentation. Again, uh, another outcome is the promotional materials and usable publicity content. And what's the impact? I'm just gonna read the one in the middle that talks about a way to celebrate this century. Uh, the organization turns 100 years old in 2024. Uh, COVID brought to light both strengths and weaknesses. We have grown a lot in the online arena. Uh, Online clubs that used to be kind of uh, fringe, if you will, or outliers are now uh, being intended to by the same volunteers at the district level. All those details have been worked out again. It's, it's a volunteer organization. People are there because they want to be there and because they want to learn more. So to me, creating this content and putting it out there will be, in my opinion, a boost to a hashtag, there is a hashtag out there uh, tied to Toastmaster, hashtag my why. There was another one, hashtag Toastimonials. But as you can see, by hitting that record button, taking the step to create your branded thumbnail and learning how to do the basics of uploading in YouTube on your own, you could be creating content that can be easily shared. From the same source, the Kellogg Foundation, uh, I'm just going to read the titles because now they created a flowchart out of it. Uh, the assumptions, by the way, the material will be posted on the chat. So I suggest uh, if, if you liked it, please wait until we post it in the chat at the end so you can download it and see it. So again, the assumptions on the top right. Then we have a strategies. This is where the flowchart begins. We have influential factors that are then divided into problems and, or issues and community needs and assets. And then in the, at the bottom right corner, you see the desired results. The, when one re, uh, reviews this uh, Kellogg theory of change diagrams, we can see in this case that small is beautiful. And again, portable. For me, it's a very low stake exercise to hit record because I attend my meetings. I, I partake in a club here nearby. Uh, in Erlanger, Kentucky, that's a suburbia of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I also attend a club that's based out of Munich, Europe. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to polish my German and I'm trying to start in, in Mandarin. And guess what? They cater to both. So that's it. You know, I'm doing that. And by hitting record when I'm putting out my project, I can go back, evaluate myself, and again, uh, promote the activities of the so to, to mobilize the energy of the audience into creating this content, to me, is something that could have a sizable impact. And that's why I'm here planning to do more, uh, planning to be on a, at least a year before next spring on this roadshow, asked to speak, uh, come to a club, explain it, learn from it, and continue polishing. So... And, 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 and once again, I put a note here for myself, and this is something that I also use at work. It's, it's of course, uh, more in the corporate environment, 
But since I have access to the tools, I started to do it. And, and guess what? I, I, even though at the beginning, why are you recording all that? I realized that some peers and colleagues are realizing the value because ultimately getting all that people in one room, it's, uh, it's hard. So who else? As I said, this is something for other organizations for documenting new software features. Uh, I've seen it at work in, in larger companies. Uh, I call them video versions of the work instructions. So anything worth documenting and sharing. Many people complain that there is no documentation out there. And this is a quick way of getting documentation. So why now? To me, a lot of people have had to embrace virtual conferencing and getting content out of it. To me, it's an added value. Even if it's only meant to be reviewed and, and for, in my case, for example, for requirements gathering to literally verbatim take down notes after the meeting and make sure that when I submit a project, uh, it's properly documented. It allows for implicit collaboration. The, the question about why these three apps, that's a great question to myself. And I hope that you are thinking the same way. These technologies, as I surveyed them in the course, allow for a single actor to take control of the entire production process at their desktop. I've finally labeled the three learning outcomes to create, to brand, and share when you visit the website. Again, the links will be provided at the end. It limits the post-production, and it allows one person to do it all on their own. So you may ask again, what do you mean no post-production? Preparing branding and nomenclature cuts back on the time needed to prepare the files to be uploaded. It, it allows you to sort them out quickly. It speeds up the time to, to disseminate them. So again, the question is, why think I'll fix it afterwards when you can be prepared as part of your whatever project it is, not just the speech project again, but anything that you're preparing. Have your thumbnails ready. Have what even the calendar invite, for example, on a, on, a, on a Teams call can be part of your labeling and your nomenclature. So who prepares this way? Prepared speeches lie at the core of the Toastmasters program. Uh, members prepare and rehearse ahead of time, fully focus on the best possible delivery of their project. And then they listen for the feedback. Again, who prepares this way? Uh, I presented to them. And to use the C4 use case for their own prepared speech projects. And finally, uh, what, what, what's covering those speech projects? Principles of oratory, active listening, and feedback. And to reiterate, the organization is renowned for for close to 100 years. So what else can this intervention do? This will be used to create content, to promote regular public relations events. Uh, again, in our case, to illustrate the, those core activities. In the CLOs, in the intervention, they can be ported and scaled to most any audience. How and where? Uh, I've already presented on this roadshow, uh, again, as part of the research that I've set myself to continue for a year and maybe make it part of my doctoral dissertation already presented at the Spring District Conference. Uh, there are venues such as the Toastmaster Leadership Institute and club educational events. I'm also seeking uh, a SMEs to interview. Uh, I was interviewed for a Latin X Honors Program by a faculty here at UAGC, and she was using exactly this principle. So I would like to hear how she figured out and, and what else could be done with that. So how granular? I think based on you know, direct observation and adding some surveys to the intervention, I can get more, more data. To me, the, the recordings, which I hope people will simply add a hashtag, which will be at the end, journaling journey, to their recording, that's all the credit I want, and that's all I'm trying to track through using the social media dashboards is the hashtag. What's your research methodology, you may ask? According to Piskerich from his 2012 book, 
This is social network driven delivery. This is blended informal learning. We're really good at that. I'm glad I took this uh, graduate program because now I understand a lot of uh, educational endeavors better. In an asynchronous fashion, one can do this, prepare, read ahead, and then, of course, meet and complete it and, and complete the content. And most important, in leveraging established COPs or communities of practice. This is the other, uh, to me, more academic uh, slide that I have is about how this intervention will be delivered. As I said, it's not something that is uh, over. It's far from over. I want to continue for at least a year, get more data, and explain it to the original audience. So what's that timeline? Again, uh, already started on April 9th, uh, the District 40 Spring Conference. We're here now at the Research Symposium. Uh, next Monday, uh, I will be the MC at an open house and I hope to capture the whole event, again, for promotional purposes. And there is another one that I hope to conduct in, in, in that German language on this roadshow phase. How long are, am I gonna do this? Again, giving myself a year after graduation. I hope to see some of you and. May 22nd in Tucson, we just got the, the commencement newsletter and, co and continually publish this analysis as part of the journaling journey, podcast and companion video blog. So is that all Francisco? Sorry. Okay. Nope. Okay. Um, this is where I wanted to say that uh, you being allowed to partake of this research symposium has sparked uh, interest in me in eventually uh, following up uh, with uh, making this the thesis a statement of, of a doctoral dissertation. I don't know when, but it, it could it could be between then, uh, now and then. So I hope some of you are thinking, yes, I'm in. Uh, I, I don't want to call this a plug. Uh, they stopped, when we started the instruction intervention uh, uh, program. They told us about contact time I'm offering to those who are able to at least review the materials that are already posted at the website, uh, www.journalingjourney.org, a half hour to work in the specifics uh, as to what you have been doing. And all I'm asking for return again is to put a hashtag when you put the video in the social media of your choice. And the hashtag is journaling journey. Again, hashtag journaling journey. That's all I'm asking for. That's going to help me track. Um, this intervention was presented again at the District 40 conference. It's on YouTube already. And I think I'm on time for some questions. And I will see if I can. Put this on the chat myself. Well, I already posted in the chat. Um, Perfect. Hopefully, it's what what you wanted to be there. Um, yes. But I, wanted to, I wanted to thank you so much for such an informative presentation. This was wonderful. Um, I do have I do have some some general questions for you. Um, but you, you shared so much information with us so far. Um, I'm I'm wondering if you would consider partnering with others who are delving into similar areas of groupware or who have interests that, that align with yours, what kinds of opportunities might, might lie in your future there? Oh, definitely. That's a great question, Dr. Stubbs. Uh, again, the, 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 the first word is collaborative. To me, anyone who wants to create content, not just these tools, maybe they're tools that they have access to. I'm pretty... I'm gonna say agnostic when it comes to technology. I, I cannot say this is better than that because some people that's what they can use, that's what they have access to. And as I said before, when one knows the principles, one is able to trans translate them and move them around no matter what the application, one understands the business. So if anyone wants to partake, here's my contact information. All I'm asking in return is a hashtag, thank you. Wonderful. Well, we are at the end of our time together, but again, there's there's quite a bit of information shared in the chat and ways, obviously, here to connect with Francisco. So I would encourage folks to do that. Um, I'm also going to share in the chat a link to the CEDL website where folks can go if they would like to re-watch 
this presentation or check out some of the other presentations from yesterday, the rest of today or earlier today, and also tomorrow, as well as some e-posters that are available there. So I would encourage folks to, to take a look at that. And hopefully many of you will be able to join us tomorrow for another full day of wonderful presentations. Thank you again, Francisco. This was really great. I've learned so much by working with you and by hearing your presentation. So I've really appreciated this. And thank you. Like, I likewise, Dr. Stubb, I, I posted the PDF as well. Anybody wants on the chat? Excellent. And, and just to, to let you know, lots of compliments in the chat. Thank you for all the information. Very informative presentation. So I would be remiss if I did not pass that along as well. Thanks. Thank you so much.